All right, so tonight we're not doing much of a talk for the masterclass. We are actually doing a practice that is geared for a windy day or a storm that's coming in, which is what we're dealing with right now. Uh, that it's a, it's a really great practice. Whenever there's a wind, what that's doing is, is it's causing a vata uh, imbalance. It's a, it's a vata day. So lots of wind and it's cold. If there's uh, cold temperatures, it makes it more harsh. So that uh, is going to accentuate all of the vata characteristics and qualities. So if you live in the mountains where we are in Reno, we're in the mountains. Um, and I know Melissa, you're in Colorado, so that's in the mountains. If you live in the mountains, what happens is we're already living in an area where it's high vata. It's considered a vata location. It's harsher, harsher area to live in, drier, and it's um, extreme temperatures, very cold, very hot, right? Variable, variable temperatures. So when it's windy, what that tends to do to people is cause a lot of chaos. It can make us feel scattered and we want to be more grounded. So the practice that we're doing tonight is to manage that. So this dosha practice, this Ayurvedic yoga practice tonight is really about how to bring vata back into balance when we're dealing with an environment around us that is causing chaos or help making us feel scattered. That can happen for other reasons too. Like say you have to move or you have a lot of change going on in your life or you've been running around. You'll want a more grounding practice. You'll want to manage all that vata, which is movement, 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 lots and lots of movement. Even if you are a more grounded constitution like a kapha, you can have a vata imbalance. It, it happens because life is constantly stimulating us. You get overstimulated, then you end up with a vata imbalance. So this is to help a vata imbalance. That's what this practice is for. So let's get started. We're going to come to our mat and uh, we're going to start out on the ground. Okay, so on the ground and laying on your back. Bring your feet in. Good. From there, we're going to actually bring our feet together and go into Supta Baddha Konasana. So you're just opening up the legs. If you are feeling any kind of strain in the pelvis, then you'll want to right away grab a couple of blocks and support the legs. And we're starting out closing the eyes and connecting with the body, letting the body relax, letting the body feel grounded. Let the breath slow down. Good. And then from there, bring your right knee into your chest and extend the left leg. If you're using blocks, you'll want to move your blocks out of the way. Take the right knee across the body. Take it across. And then release and extending that right leg. Left knee comes in and we're taking it across the body. And then release and extend the legs. Interlace your fingers and reach through the top of the head. Reach. And from there, you're going to keep the fingers interlaced and grab the knee, pull the head up. And then reach again. And then grab the left knee and pull the head up. And we're going to do that a few times. Inhale as you reach. Exhale, draw in. Inhale, reach. Exhale, draw in. Inhale, reach. 
Exhale, draw in. Inhale, reach. Exhale and drawing in. Couple more, inhale, reach. Exhale, the knee draws in. Inhale, reach. Exhale, the left knee draws in. Good, and then from here, we're gonna bring the arms back down to your side, push up into bridge. So you flatten out your feet and push up into bridge. Arms then lift up above the head and pause here, take a few breaths. And then lowering the pelvis. And as you lower, you're gonna extend your right leg out and lift your upper body. Pause. So with Vata, we want to have more of a pause with each pose, feeling ourselves grounding and being stable because that's what Vata needs. Grounding, stability, stillness. And then bringing the foot in, reach up, and lift the pelvis. And then lowering the pelvis and reach, extending that left leg. And then bring it in. And again, reach, lower, extend the right leg. Bring it in and reach and lower, extend the left leg. So we are gonna pick up the pace just a little bit more in, reach, and you can continue to alternate. Right leg extends or see if you can extend both legs. Then both feet come in, reach, lower, extend the left leg or both legs. Bring it in, reach. Lower the pelvis, either just extending the right leg or both legs extend. Bring it in, reach. Lower, extending the left leg or both legs. We're gonna do two more sets. In, reach. Lower, right leg extends or both. In and reach. Lower, left leg extends or both legs. Last set, bring it in and reach. Lower, extending the right leg or both. In and reach. Lower and extending the left leg. Good, holding it there, drawing the knees in and releasing your head. From here, the legs are gonna go up. Arms are gonna go out to your side. Good, lowering the right leg. Now I do want you to bring your lumbar curve back. Lower the right leg, bring it up. Lower the left leg. So we're working on core strength here, which Vata needs stability. Lower, lift, lower, lift, lower. Now, if you want, try both legs. Otherwise, just the right leg lowers, lift, just the left leg lowers. Lift, right, lift, left, lift. One more set, lower, right leg or both. Lift, the left leg or both. Lift, good, from here, we're gonna lower those legs, roll to the right side, and then bring yourself up. So we're gonna go up into a seated position if you want to use a blanket, grab a blanket and sit up on the blanket. Good. Right leg is going to extend, the left leg comes in. And then open up. Right leg is extending, left leg comes in. From there, you lower that left arm and reach, lift up. Open up the whole front of the body. And then release, go back down, do it again. 
hold, opening up the side body. And then that left hand reaches, open up the whole front of the body. And then release down. Good. Now you're going to pull in that right leg, extend the left leg. Same thing, open up the side body. Take your time, breathe into the shoulder girdle. Breathe into the side body, then drop the hand and reach, extend. And then lower and open up. Same thing. And then that right hand reaches behind you, open up the whole front of the body. Good. And then from there, we're going to bring both feet in. We are going to add rotation. So both feet come in and we grab and rotate to the right side. And then go to the other side. Good, and then from there, we're gonna come right on top of the feet, the hands come to the floor, and then you push into the hands and straighten the legs. Completely release your head. Bend those knees and come up into Utkatasana, and we're holding Utkatasana. Pause here, draw the navel in. So there Important alignment things, you do want to draw the navel in, lift up. Tailbone is going to point down towards the floor. Open up the armpits. And we're being stable here. Soften your face though. No strain. And then reach, extend, and release your arms. Good. We're going to come to the top of the mat. Inhale up. Exhale, drop down into forward fold. And then step back into down dog. Pause here in down dog. Open up the armpits, draw the navel in, get hollow in your belly. And from here, drop down to your knees. We're going to release back into extended prayer. Drop the forehead down, then lift up. Shift your weight forward and slowly lower. So we are gonna do our first lowering, just lowering the legs, then the pelvis, then the belly, then the chest. Slowly roll back up and go into down dog. Pick up your right leg and step forward for warrior one. Drop the back heel and the hands come into the heart Line up the pelvis, so right hip back, left hip forward, and then reach. And once you get here, once you're in the pose, you hold it. You take your eyes off into the horizon, staring at a single point, and then move yourself into stillness. Be still. We're trying to pacify vata in the body. Calm everything down. Slow everything down. Slow down the movement. All right, so it's physical, it's mental, it's emotional, it's energetic. Be still. And then straighten your leg and the arms are gonna lower. And from here, we're gonna release down with a straight leg. Your hands are either gonna go to the shin and relax the head or you're to the ground, or you can use a couple blocks on either side of the foot. 
okay? If you do not have two blocks and you only have one, take the block to the top of the foot. And then again, we get into the pose. Slow down the breath. And be very still. So once you get stable in the pose, move into stillness. We're doing the opposite of the wind. Wind is moving around, circulating around. We are doing the opposite of the wind. Good. Looks good. Good. From there, release and step back into down dog again. Pause there, get hollow in your belly. Really stable. And then we shift into plank. Again, stable. Lower to the knees and then slowly lower down. Lift up cobra. Pause. And then press back, down dog. Pick up your left leg and step forward, Virabhadrasana, one each. Hands to the heart. So set up the pelvis, left hip back, right hip forward, and then reach up. And hold it. And straightening that leg and slowly releasing all the way down. And it's the same thing. Your hands are going to go to the shin. They can go to the ground. You can use two blocks. Whatever variation you want to do or a single block. Whatever variation you choose to do once you're in it, then you move into stillness. Once you're stable in the pose, move into stillness. And then from there, step back into down dog. Good. Holding down dog. We're using our yoga practice as a way to manage what's going on in our lives. That's really the purpose. Shift forward into plank. Lower with control, modify to the knees if you need to. Lift up Cobra. Pause there for just a moment. Stillness. And then back down dog. Take a moment in each one of these poses to make sure that you get into the pose and then you bring that body into stillness. And picking up the right leg, stepping forward now for warrior two. Drop the back heel and open up. Warrior two. Stable in the pose. Then rotating forward, as you rotate forward, come up on the back toes and pause there. Pause. You're still bent in the front knee. And then lower. And as you lower, you're going to drop the head to the inside of the leg. So I still have my right hand here on my sacrum. And I'm dropping down.
keep drawing back through the left heel forward through the knee. And if you want to, you can take that right arm away from the sacrum and it comes down and goes underneath the leg to the baby toe side of the foot. Keep dropping your head. Now you're gonna use this upper arm on the right hand, I'm keeping that hand on the ground to push the calf and shin forward as I draw my left heel back. So I'm using some pressure here on the leg, pushing it forward. And then releasing that hand, bring it to the baby toe side of the foot from the front. Step back, down dog. Shift forward plank, pause. Lower with control, modify to the knees if you need to. Lift up cobra, again pause. Soften the face, press back down dog. And then from there, picking up the left leg, step forward, Virabhadrasana two, so warrior two. And again, we open up, get strong and steady. Holding that pose, move into stillness, Pacify that vata. And then that back hand goes forward. Left hand goes back. You're going to come up on the toes. You can adjust this back foot and bring it over a little bit. Reach. Good. And then that hand drops down. The left hand goes to your sacrum. You're dropping the left shoulder to the inside of the knee. Hold it there. So you're basically in a high lunge. And then from there, you have the option of dropping that left hand. It goes under, under the thigh. The hand goes on the ground and now you push forward with the upper arm on the left hand. Push the calf forward. Keep reaching back through the right heel. Drop and relax the head. Feel strength building. Feel stability in the pose. Then releasing that hand pull it around and all the way around to the baby toe side of the foot, step back, down dog. Shift forward into plank, be steady here. Lower with control. Lift up Bhujanasana, pause, soften the face. Press back, Adho Mukha Savasana, down dog. Hold it. Pick it up your right leg. And now we step forward for Trikonasana. So you drop the back heel. If you are using a block, it goes on the baby toe side of the foot. Or if you're more flexible, that hand still goes on the baby toe side of the foot. Line up the heel with the arch of the back foot. If you do not have a block, then you could take your hand to the shin. And I would actually start out higher. Line up that top shoulder, the left shoulder with the right shoulder. Get the torso lined up with the front leg. Then from there, you slowly lower.
open up. If you're more flexible, drop the hand to the ground. Keep the legs straight. Soften your face. I want to add Ardha Chandrasana, which is a balancing posture. So if you are using a block, you're gonna take it with you. And we wanna be as stable and still as we can. So drop the left arm to start to the low back. Turn your head and look at your big right toe. Reach out, plant the block if you're using one or your hand to the ground. Slowly lift your back leg up. Now your back leg is very active, just like your standing leg. Then release your arm and now move into stillness. Be totally still, strong, steady, and still. And if you feel good today, turn your head to the side. From there, we lower. Now, when you lower, we're gonna rotate and square the hips. You're gonna rotate the left hip, drop into a half lunge. And I want you to release down to the inside of the shoulder. Go all the way down. Relax your head. Just block if you would like. And we're holding that and being very still, silent and still, grounded. Slow everything down. Good, curl your toes under on that left leg and step back. Again, down dog, holding down dog. We're taking our time, holding each one of these poses. We're not moving fast. If you're feeling the urge to move fast, then this is actually a great practice for you. Because what it's gonna do, is gonna slow you down. We're forcing the body to move more deliberately, slower. And then shifting forward into plank, draw back through your heels. And then from there, do come forward onto the toes if you're lowering from plank. Otherwise, modify to your knees. Lower with control. Lift up Bhujanasana. Soften the face. Pause here. And then press back into down dog. Adho Mukha Savasana. Strong and stable. From here, picking up the left leg and stepping that leg forward, Trikonasana again. So start out by lining up the front heel with the arch of the back foot. If you're using a block, it goes on that baby toe side of the foot. Open up the torso. If you're up higher, it actually is easier to get the body aligned. So the hand can be at the shin. Then extend that right arm, stack the right shoulder on top of the left. And lower. Good. 
If you're a little more flexible, your hand can go to the ground. Keep lining up that torso. And then once you are set up, be really still. Moving from here into Ardha Chandrasana, so drop that right hand to the low back. Turn your head, look at your big left toe. Bend the knee, slide the back leg in. At the same time, you're reaching forward. If you, want, if you have a block, take it with you. Lift up. You're reaching, this arm is gonna be the distance of your torso. And then release the right arm and extend it up. The leg that's in the air is just as active as your standing leg. If you feel stable, turn your head to the side. Whatever position that you're choosing to stay in for this pose, be in it stable. And then move into stillness. And then from there, slowly lowering. And when you lower, you're gonna rotate and square those hips. So drop the right hip down, lowering into half lunge. Go to the inside, go all the way down, either onto a block or onto the ground. Relax. Soften the breath and move into stillness. And then from there, slowly, slowly, bringing that left hand to the baby toe side of the foot. Step back into down dog. We're going to pause there. Then shifting into plank and again, pausing there. Come forward on the toes, lower with control, modify to the knees if you need to. Go all the way down, push up into Cobra and pause there. And then we're gonna go back into extended prayer. So open up the knees, big toes together. Keep the arms extended, drop the forehead down. Good, then coming back into down dog. Pick up your right leg, step forward. We are gonna go into warrior two again, but we're really just going into warrior two to kind of set up the feet, lining up heel to heel. You want a wider stance. 
and then dropping into Parshvokanasana, reaching the left arm alongside the ear, palm is down and thumb is reaching back behind you. This is a variation of Parshvokanasana side angle. You can use a block, which would go on the big toe side of the foot. And you also can use just having your hand on the ground. Then the left arm is going to drop. So you're dropping the arm and you're going to rotate your right foot and go wide legged and grab the big toes, two fingers, wrap around the big toe and connect to the thumb. And then you drop down, all the way down. Bend those elbows, forehead down, and top of the head goes towards the ground. So the crown reaches the ground if you're flexible enough. If not, that's okay. You're just going to hold it there. Stillness. And then from there, slowly, slowly rotating back towards the right leg. All right, drop the back knee. And then you keep the toes curled under on that back foot as you shift back. Now, you do have some options here. I'm going to actually ask you to just stay up. You could sit on your heel, and then we reach for the right foot. OK? If that's uncomfortable for you, then grab one of your blocks and sit on a block, no problem. Drop the head. So sometimes the weight on the foot that you're sitting on can be a lot. The heel actually goes into the crack of your butt. That's where it goes. It's a little more stable there. And then we shift forward. Now, when we shift forward, you're going into that half lunge. And then you're going to walk that right foot over to the left. Keep walking it to the left. Grab one of your blocks or a blanket and throw it underneath your right hip. And drop into a big pigeon. Big pigeon, what I mean by that is we're really trying not to let that right heel drop to the groin. All right, so if you need a little more support, grab your blanket, roll it up, throw it underneath that right glute, okay? Right hand is on the knee. Left hand is on the foot, trying to keep it up. And you're walking that left leg back. This is big. If this is going to release all of that, that stuff that gets stuck in the hip, the rotators and the glutes on the side there. So we're going to rotate around this. First, we lower. First, you lower. Do your best. If your heel drops a little bit to the groin, it's fine, you guys. And then rotate your torso towards your right knee and hold it there. And then lifting up and rotate to the other side. So you're now rotating towards your foot, toward the right foot. Try to push that left hip down, 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 down.
All right, and then slowly, slowly lifting up. Push up, curl your toes under, and step back in down dog. And we're holding down dog. Nice and stable. If you want to do a plank and a chaturanga, you can go ahead and do that. So shift into plank. Otherwise, you could just hold down dog. Lower from plank. Lift up into cobra. And press back, down dog. Good. Then pick up the left leg and step forward. And we're going into warrior two again. But that's really just our setup pose. So open up your legs, open wide. Look down that middle left finger. And then lowering. So partial Konasana. If you want to go deeper in Parjava Konasana, bring a block into the big toe side of the foot or your hand can go down and we're holding. That right palm is flat and thumb is reaching back behind you. Keep drawing your navel in. Stillness, so really stable in the pose and then still. And then from there, drop the right arm and we rotate to the right. The left foot turns and you go wide legged again. A little bit different this time. We are dropping the head. The arms are gonna go up to the back, interlace your fingers and lift those arms up off the back, drop the head down. If you're able to get that crown of the head down to the floor, great. But if not, it's not a big deal. We're really more interested in releasing tension out of the neck and the shoulders. Keep reaching the arms up towards the head, beyond the head. and then slowly releasing the arms back to the low back and then all the way back to the ground and then rotate towards that left foot. Drop the back knee and we're going into that pigeon. So you walk that left foot to the right edge. Here's where we're gonna grab a block or a blanket or a bolster and it goes underneath the left glute. Keep walking that left foot to the edge and then lower. We're going into a really big pigeon. We're trying to keep the ankle and the knee lined up. You do want to keep pushing your right hip down. It's big. Walk that right leg. Walk it back. I have to add that other pose here. And then lowering. So now you go down onto the elbows, onto the forearms. And then we're going to rotate towards the knee. So rotate over to the knee, keep the head down.
and then rotate over to the foot. Good, and then coming back up, we are gonna bring that foot back in because I need to do that other pose. So bring it back up and then we shift back. Okay, you might wanna block here. So shift back, curl your toes under on the right foot, go all the way back, you're sitting right on that heel. Use a block if you need to. And then reach for the left foot. All right, and then we shift forward and step back into down dog. From here, look up at your hands. You're gonna walk your feet all the way in and drop down. So you are, I'm gonna just rotate this way. So you're at the top of your mat, you're gonna drop down, balancing on the top of your feet. So the front pad of your feet, you can throw a block right at your heels or a blanket for just a little bit more stability here. Good, and then we lift up and the hands come to the heart. Legs are together. And we add rotation now to the right. Now, remember, we're really trying to help Vata here be strong and stable. So this is a balancing posture. Get stable and then be really still in it. And then go to the other side. So the hands come back to the center and then we rotate to the other side. Same thing, get really stable. And then be still. And then the hands come down right on the floor. If you're using a blanket or a block, pull it away. Hands on the ground and push into a forward fold. Slow everything down, the breath. Relax the shoulders. Relax your head. Good, and then from there we bend our knees again. But this time we're gonna go onto our back we're gonna go seated first. Extend your left leg out, draw the right knee or the right foot in, and then lift up tall, grab that right leg and rotate. Look to the right side. Slow everything down, be still. If your normal mode is rush, 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 
start to feel the difference in the body when the body slows down. It's calmer. And then from there, you take the right leg. You have a few options. You can go right here, inner thigh, or stack the knees and reach. If you do want to sit up on a blanket, give yourself a little more height. It's a really nice option if you got tight, a tight back, tight hamstrings, tight hips. It'll help. And then lifting up and switching legs. Left leg comes in and rotate. And once you're in the pose, be completely still. And then opening up, either that foot goes to the inner thigh or pull it over, stack those knees. And again, reach. Relax your head. And then from there, slowly, slowly lifting up, taking it onto your back, doing a little bridge, counter posture. And then lowering. If you want to do another rotation side to side, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, Shavasana, so grabbing a bolster or another blanket, place it underneath the knees. Make sure that you're warm, get yourself covered up. If you have a sweatshirt, you can put that on. Hands are going to rest at the upper thigh, palms up. Shoulder blades underneath you. Cover your eyes, either with a dark cloth, an eye pillow, or an eye mask. And then same thing, you want to make sure that you feel the stability of the pose, feel your connection to the ground, really rooted. Everything is supported. Then bring that body into total stillness, no movement. And the mind then also merges into the stillness, the experience of the stillness. So the mind then settles into experiencing stillness. Body and mind completely still.
And then begin to deepen your breath. Slowly roll to your right side. Come up to a comfortable seated position, hands together, and connect your thumbs to your heart. Sitting up tall, you want to add space in between each vertebra, but then soften, close your eyes, and feel your entire skin soften. And again, feel grounding. Feel stability. And then stillness. May you have peace in your sleep, that stillness that helps you to be grounded, that gives you rejuvenation, and revitalizes the body and the mind. Thank you for being here tonight. Namaste.